with Valentine's Day just around the corner, you may have some coworkers, school friends, and stamping friends that you want to send a little caring note to. So today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a quick and easy little note card and envelope so you can make quick work of all of those Valentine's Day projects. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to do this project. First, you're going to need some stamps, and I'm using two of the stamps from the True Love Stamp TV kit. The first one is the label stamp, and then another one is one of the greetings, and this greeting fits inside this label stamp. You're also going to need the coordinating die, and this is from the Spellbinders Labels 8 die set, and that fits perfectly with our stamp that's in that kit. Then you're going to need some ink pads, and I have two memento ink pads. One is tuxedo black and one is rhubarb stock. You're also going to need a few Copic markers, and I have R59, which is cardinal. I have R35, which is coral. I have BG10, which is cool shadow, and then I have my Copic colorless blender. And that I'm just going to use for any cleanup if I go outside of the lines. Then you're going to need some score tape, and I'm using the 1 8 of an inch score tape for this project because the little area that I want to tape is very, very thin. If you don't have the 1 8 of an inch score tape and you have the quarter inch or the half inch, just cut a little piece from your larger score tape that will fit in this area so you don't have to run out and get the 1 8 of an inch unless you want to have it and you want to make a lot of projects. It is more convenient, but you can make use of what you have in the meantime. Then, for the envelope, I'm going to use this corner rounder. I'm also going to use a piece of the pattern paper from the True Love Pattern Paper Pack. And then, for my main part of my card, I'm going to use a piece of the Gina K Designs 120-pound base weight white, because this is going to be my whole card, so I want it to be nice and sturdy. And then I do have a pair of scissors, too. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create the label. This is going to be the front of the card. So we want to ink this up really well, and I'm going to use some of the rhubarb stock ink for this. Makes it a lot easier to turn the stamp on its back and use the ink pad to get the ink on the stamp rather than do it the other way. This way you can see that you've inked up the entire surface of the stamp. And then I'm going to stamp that right here at the bottom of my piece of white cardstock. There we go. Now my next step is to stamp the greeting, and I'm going to do that with Tuxedo Black. And what I've done here is because I want this to line up perfectly, I've created an image on my imaging sheet for the stamp -a jig so that I can stamp this perfectly in the center where I want it. So I'm going to lay that imaging sheet down and replace my tool. And then I'm going to ink up my stamp and stamp it. And there we go. Perfectly centered. Okay, now that I have my front of my card done, the next step is to cut it out using that Spellbinders die. And I'm going to use my cuddle bug for this, starting with my A plate and my B plate. I'm going to lay down my piece of cardstock and then center the die right around the image that I want to cut out. And then I'm going to use my C plate, C is for cut, and I'm going to cut that out. Okay, now that I have that one cut out, I'm going to need the back of my card. So I'm going to cut one more, and I'll use that empty spot at the top. Make sure that's not dusty there. So one little quarter sheet of cardstock will make a whole card. This way, if you're judging how many pieces of cardstock you'll need to make for how many different projects, you can easily get four projects out of one sheet of cardstock. Okay, so there's the back of my card and the front of my card. Now the next step is to get my score pal in the action. I didn't mention that in my supply list, but I very rarely make a project without my score pal or my score buddy, so 
I kind of always know it's in there. I'm going to take my the back of the card and line that up right in that right hand top corner. And then right at the two inch mark, I'm going to score. Now you can see that's a very tiny little space there. I'll show you that a little bit closer. Right there is the two inch mark. You can see very tiny little bit of space. And that's where I'm going to add my score tape. So I'm going to add that before I fold it. Let me grab a little piece of tape here, measure it out, and then stick that right up against that score line. I don't want it to hang over too much. There we go. That's not hanging over. Okay. Now, to line this up, I'm just going to make sure that all four, all the different sides, all four sides line up right before I really put a lot of pressure down. And once I have that all lined up, then I can squeeze. Now once I've squeezed that together, then I can bend on that score line on the back like that. And now I have a little card. You can see that'll stand up by itself. So now I'm going to color this. And what I'm going to start with is that R35, which is coral, and I'm using the fine tip of my original marker here. And I know this seems just a little brighter than that rhubarb stalk ink, but that's okay. That's what I want because I kind of want the center of my hearts to glow. And I'm going to create that effect with these markers by blending the two together, the darker red that I showed you and this light coral red. Okay, so that's my first step. My next step is to take the R59, which is cardinal, and then I'm just going to go lightly around the perimeter of the heart I'm leaving that center open like that then going back over it with the cardinal again I'm sorry with the coral again I'm going to start coloring over that cardinal and just blending those two colors together and that gives me that glow in the center. You see that pretty glow there? Now, using the cool shadow, which is BG10, I'm just going to highlight around the outside of the hearts, and that'll accent them even more. You can take that out as far as you want. And that really does kind of make the whole area just pop out. See that little bit of glow. And then since I didn't go outside the lines on my hearts, I don't have to use my Copic Clear Colorless Blender to pick up any of that ink that was on the outside. Okay, so now my next step is I'm going to make an envelope that matches this little card because this is kind of a different shape than a square card, which I've done in the past. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to start off with a piece of the pattern paper from the True Love Stamp TV kit. And I'm going to take my scoring tool and I'm going to start by, actually I'm going to turn it sideways because I want this to be the top and this to be the bottom. So I'm going to start at four and a quarter inches. I'm going to score there. And then here I'm going to score at one and three quarter inches. Like that. Then here I'm going to go four and three quarter inches. 
we saw that I turned it a half. Now I'm going to turn it completely around so I can do that last side at four and three quarter inches. So now I have all my score lines. Next I'm going to trim off these four boxes and those boxes are easy to see because you're just going to cut on the score lines. And I would cut before you actually fold. It does make it a little bit easier. Because then the paper's not kind of flopping up at you when you're trying to trim it. Okay. And there are my four boxes that I've cut off. Okay. Now, I'm going to fold this. I'm going to fold one side in and the other side in. And then this side I'm going to fold up. Now this doesn't look very finished to me. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to cut from on an angle just up to that notch there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, just eyeballing it. Now when I fold these in, this looks a little bit more finished to me. You could do it this way if you prefer, but I kind of like the flap kind of hiding those sides. And to make it look even a little bit more finished, I'm going to use my corner rounder and I'm going to let me show you how this works here. I'm going to round these two corners just by putting that corner in that little notch there and punching. Everybody should have a corner rounder. They're nice for so many things. And now my little envelope looks a lot more finished and this flap will fold down. Now I'm going to add two little pieces of score tape right here and then I'm going to add two pieces of score tape right here. And this way, everything will stay tacked down really nicely. And I'll be able to slide my card in and out easily without any of these little edges popping up and getting in the way. So here's another little piece of score tape there. And one more little piece. Right here. Now, put away this excess. And then we'll tape it all together. Okay, so here we go. Make sure it's all lined up nicely, and then you can put the pressure on. And now you have a cute little envelope. Once you put something in it, you can seal it again with some score tape or a little piece of scotch tape, whatever you want. And look how nicely this fits in. It's a nice fit for your little card. And let me show you what else fits in here. This is a really nice little envelope for gift cards. Here's a little Starbucks gift card, and that also fits in there perfectly. You can also slip a little card in there with it if you wanted to say something special, and that makes a nice little gift. Put a little ribbon around it, maybe a little coffee tag, and there's a perfect little gift. So that's a quick and easy little project for you to do for Valentine's Day. But don't limit yourself just to Valentine's Day. Use these quick little label cards to attach to gifts, and you can also use the same layout to make adorable place cards for your next formal dinner party or to label what's in each crock pot at your next potluck.